sad about the board, but I'm a little sad that the center, that the award exists, and I'm a little sad that the center itself exists. Because in my ideal world, everybody would have biodiversity conservation on their mind all the time, and there wouldn't be a need for center, a center that focused on biodiversity conservation. There wouldn't be a need for a center to give an award to somebody for doing something that, in fact, should be on everybody's mind. So, I really thank you for that. And now I want to quote from another, I want to read actually from another quite unusual place. It's my passport. <laughs> <laughs> One week before Thanksgiving, I was in the airport in Argentina after a 14 hour flight waiting for my six-hour bus ride. And I noticed one week before Thanksgiving that there was only one page left for my visa stamps. And you may not know this, but in your passport, there are quotes at the top of every visa page. Um, I sat there waiting for my bus, and the quote at the top of my last visa page was from the Mohawk Indians, and an excerpt from the Thanksgiving address, ironically, one week before Thanksgiving. And the quote was, we send thanks to all the animal life of the world. They have many things to teach us as people. We are glad they're still here, and we hope they will always be so. And I thought, one, it was fitting, again, it was a week before Thanksgiving. And I thought it was certainly fitting to bring this quote up here um, for a number of reasons. One is, I remember in my lifetime, I remember as a child in South Carolina, for days the skies would be black migrated twice a year, literally days. I haven't seen anything like that in over 30 years. Uh, I remember places that I caught snakes and turtles in South Carolina that are now just parking lots and abandoned strip malls. And even in my professional lifetime, places where there were literally hundreds of thousands of toad tadpoles, places, a place where I did my doctoral dissertation that is now essentially barren. That's now vineyards where the owners put out rat poison because there are no more snakes to take the rats. And I, I thought it was an interesting point that's quoted from, a, from, my, from my passport. It's in your passport, too. That the line, they have many things to teach us as people. For those of us who don't care about biodiversity, don't see the value of biodiversity, that line is quite interesting. I was there in Argentina because I was at a clinical conference. I was at a conference with surgeons and physicians who were concerned about public health. And along with Coma for the Cure and a number of other medical grand rounds and things I've done, people are starting to realize now that if we're creating a world with no biodiversity, a world that animals can't live in, we're creating a world that, that we can't live in. Since this 400 years since its original Thanksgiving in this address, it's estimated that at least a thousand species have gone extinct. For some vertebrate classes, as many as 1%, which might not sound like a lot, but the estimates are now that in this sixth mass extinction that we're losing species faster than the dinosaurs disappeared. And in particular, the group of animals that I study, as many as 70% of all amphibians globally are in decline. And in much the same way that I think Rachel Carson's Silent Spring taught us that the birds disappearing and the pending Silent Spring and the role that pesticides are playing, I think that our new canary in the cold mine and our pending silent night is telling us something. And I think we now have some allies and people who maybe don't care about biodiversity, but who are starting to see that there's not a difference between environmental health and public health. And if I could quote from one more unusual and unexpected source, a couple of years ago, I was asked to give a keynote at something called the National Presbyterians for the Earth Conference. And I thought, you know, I emailed them, I said, are you aware of what I work on? <laughs> you know, I had this vision of me in the pulpit showing gonads and frogs having sex. <laughs> and they said, yeah, they said, yeah, we know exactly what we work on. They said, our philosophy is that he gave us the earth and we are stewards of the earth. And if we're really going to protect the earth, we need to understand what you do. And the quote that I want to give is, I, I, so I went there, and just to see what I was involved in, I went to several of the sermons, and I'm not a conventionally religious person, but I went to 
several of the sermons, and their philosophy with the Presbyterians for the Earth. You should Google them, they have a website. Their philosophy is we can't fix anything, but we can stop it from getting worse. And that's that's where we're at. We can't fix the pesticide problem. You and I, everybody in this room, all have DDT in their bodies. Everybody in this room <coughs> is carrying pesticides that our grandparents applied. And our grandchildren will not only have those pesticides passed down to them, but they will carry the pesticides that we are applying. We can't fix it, but we can stop it from getting worse. Global climate change, we can't fix it. Even if we stop everything we're doing now, even if we stop using fossil fuels, even if we stop cutting trees, we're on a trajectory that's going to last for decades. We can't fix it, but we can stop it from getting worse. Same thing goes for the decline in biological diversity and extinction. We can't fix it, but we can stop it from getting worse. And that's the thing that gives me hope. That together, again, we can't fix it. Even, even the geneticists and the, and the cloners, if they can bring back the woolly mammoths and the rhinos and the Amazonian frogs, even if they can do that, where are we going to put them? There's a reason they disappeared in the first place. We can't fix it, but together we can stop it from getting worse. If we remember that there's only one way that you can change the past, and that's if you act now while it's still the future. I made that one up myself. <laughs> Thank you very much for the honor.